AMD is now a technology partner of 11-bit studios. Galux RTX 4090 20th Anniversary Edition is the industry's first desktop GPU to feature HDMI retimer. The power consumption for the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 Super Series might be the same as the non-Super Series. And lastly, AMD Polaris and Vega drivers are finally here after two months. This is Tech Track. Alright, so firstly we have AMD has partnered with the 11-bit studio, the very famous studio of course for gaming that has made multiple other games. So if you remember 11-bit studio making Frostpunk 2 The Alters, the newer game is the, the Invincible, which they have included the trailer already, as you can see the 8K gameplay footage, not the trailer, the trailer is also there, and yes, AMD has partnered with them. So that is really interesting to see that, that they're gonna be partnering with such great studio, they have made some good games, well, most of the t titles are are not that crazy titles but they do are pretty good titles like for example the frostpunk and the frostpunk 2 they are yeah they're a pretty good game uh, absolutely the invincible looks also interesting that is quite good to see that and also there's a new game coming in december 5 which will be the, the i don't know how to spell that uh t-h-a-u basically tau match nah i can't spell that it's an interesting naming they have gone gone for with this game but anyway they are making some moves here amd and 11 bit studios and probably episode 3 will be coming with this with these titles not just the invincible or the whatever this name is but the alters the frostpunk 2 they also might include episode 3 so just this is nice this is very good for amd itself because you know they will have more optimization for ryzen and radiant hardware which is really good to see that and also episode 3 supporting them would be a game changer for their game so yeah good for the gamers out there and 11-bit studios making such good games i played frostpunk 2 and frostpunk so yeah they're pretty good next up we have galax they have released their 20th anniversary 4090 the rtx 4090 and look at the card here this looks quite interesting isn't it i believe this is the well an lcd display but either way the card looks fantastic i think the actual size of the card is only right here because you know the fans are included over here and this part is kind of necessary but I guess they did want to include it and make it unique and it does look unique because whatever this is going on here it's like it's an lcd display but still looking interesting but this is not the main feature we're going to talk about here this card has an interesting feature the hdmi retimer well if you don't know what hdmi retimer is it's basically is a, a newer version of hdmi but it improves a long distance connection so basically re re removing the noise from the connection that you know if the wire is too long and obviously we know if the wire is too long it will include more noise more obstacles for the data to be transferred so they have included this newer connection which is the hdmi retimer that improves the chip of the hdmi and will basically making the long distance connections to be better even though I don't, i'm not sure why would anybody be using long distance but if you're like for for example, if you have a theater or a game theater or something, then maybe like you might want to have a, a longer wire to travel the, your TV or whatever wall mount TV you have. So yeah, it's, it, it kind of fixes that issue, but I don't think it's a really big issue for most of the gamers out there because, I mean, if you're using an RTX 4090, you might be playing some pre pretty good games and yeah, like it's, it's a very specific fix, like the long distance problem issue that like, it's not that much problematic in my opinion and as you can see this is the pcb here as i said the the whole card is not that big <laughs> it kind of looks crazy like I, only these two fans are covering this part so yeah it's not that big the other portion of it is just kind of is a flex for the design so that is pretty good i mean unnecessary but who cares it's rtx 4090 anyway and yeah that's, this is the retimer the hdmi retimer we're talking about here this is a newer tech for this gpu even though it's not really a uh, exciting thing but you know it helps for the long distance connection so who cares i mean if you do care there you have it also another interesting trend we're looking at for most of the gpus nowadays is that they're hiding the power cables which is a very good trend i really rate that because when you hide this cables it kind of helps with the you know the aesthetics so they're hiding the cable by using this cutout here as you can tell the fan is going to be covering the whole portion of it and the cutout the cable just goes right in right over here and then moves back to the chassis so yeah it is a nice way they're doing that and everyone is doing that so yeah i like this trend i rate that as you can already tell this gpu is in action as i told you the cable you can't really see that if you of course if you like going for the vertical mount it might hide entirely the whole power cable 
that you can see but that's but even if you're not you know mounting it with the vertical alignment horizontal alignment would still be good to go because you know it's still under the gpu so you know you won't be able to see it so that's really nice and as i mentioned this is the cutout they're looking looking at here because this this one goes under right so you can't really see it from the other side so yeah it's it's a pretty neat quality of life change here that i would say so yeah very pretty interesting interesting looking card here i'm not liking the aesthetics even though this part is quite unnecessary but maybe i guess it it's an rtx 4090 and maybe looking small it would not be aesthetically pleasing so they've just made whatever this is but anyway it's a 20th anniversary art galax rtx 4090 gp we're looking at and next up we have copite 7 kimi basically just tweeted this and as you can tell well if everything you see so said okay i mean replying to someone else's tweet and we can see this spec from him as you can see rtx 4080 super will be using the 8103 400 gpu die here which will have 10240 fp32 uh performance we're looking ahead or fp32 units so that's that's quite a lot that's quite a lot rtx 4070 ti super will be using the 8103 275 skew and or they might be using the 8102 175 this is not really sure which one they're going to be going for but either way it will have the fp32 of 8448 so that's pretty neat and also the l2 cache of 48 megabytes something like that so not bad rtx 4070 super which is not the ti super because there will be two models which is the ti super and super so quite interesting naming that's for sure but yeah rtx 4070 super no, non ti super i would say 8104 350 or 8103 175 these are the two gpu dies they're going to be going for and fp32 of 7168 same l2 cache so it's quite unique naming that nvidia is going um i don't know how i feel about that but it does say i still doubt with them especially with the ti super i cannot fully agree so yeah they might be canceling the 4070 ti super i suggest they, sh they should because it doesn't make any sense with the name they're going for ti super i've never heard this before but either way what is interesting though is that they will have he, he coded this and as you can see they will have the same power consumption than non super models so basically the non super models the rtx 4070 the rtx 4080 the 4090 whatever you call it i'm not sure 4090 will have a super model but i feel like 4070 and 4080 or maybe even 4060 they will have the similar power consumption as the non super models basically so that's a good thing because it is giving you a boost in performance i wonder how much boost though that is a question a really grain of salt question you can ask me that but the only good thing is that the power consumption will be the same hopefully the performance will be better but if it's like a 10 percent boost i'm not really happy with that absolutely not but if it's like a maybe like a 15 20 percent increase in performance maybe we can consider the same power consumption that is an improvement that's for sure now the power stages we're looking at is that 320 285 and 220 basically not 200 324 probably the rtx 4080 super 285 for the 4070 ti super again at this it's a grain of salt still that it's gonna be you know present but we'll see about that and for the rtx 4070 super non-ti super of course it will be 220 he corrected that so yeah it's the same power stages as the non-super model so not bad not bad i would say that so yeah we'll see how that goes and lastly, we have the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition update for the 23.11.1 release. And, well, it's a good thing that they have added the Polaris and Vega, as you can see right over here. They finally added Polaris and Vega, because in 23.10.1 and 10.2, they, they had no Polaris or Vega. So, people were, you know, kind of scared. Did they cancel Polaris or Vega driver updates? Well reality is they didn't so that's great right so yeah they just fixed some issues here is that intermittent corporate corruption may be briefly observed while playing counter-strike 2 with vulcan appear on some amd graphics products such as the rx 580 so there we have it they do have a fix for the rx 580 meaning that the polaris card is getting some fixes but that is nice to see that but for two months they were teasing us the teasing the polaris and vega users here 
I, I would feel really very bad for them because you know it, they are still there are plenty of users out there for the Polaris and Vega users. So I would not be happy if they just canceled it out of nowhere because they didn't didn't really note anyone that they're gonna be doing this. But yeah, it did scare them. AMD is teasing the gamers, that's for sure. Anyway, they have also included the unable to select summary table in ACC A software Edificius architectural design on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon 7 which is a Vega card so there we have it the Vega and the Polaris card getting some updates so that is nice to see that there's an important note to have included which is kind of weird but I think they are trying to fix something but they haven't as you can see a factory reset has been temporarily disabled as precautionary measure while we address isolated installation issues that have been reported during PC upgrades so you they're saying that there's uh, some issue here and they are also suggesting that users may use AMD cleanup utility as a temporary option. So yeah, that's kind of strange why they're doing this, but either way, that's not really important. So they're suggesting users to use the AMD cleanup utility before installing any kind of uh, AMD drivers. So it's a, it's a very odd issue they're facing, but I guess if you're using the AMD Polaris or Vega series of GPUs, I suggest doing a clean install, basically using the AMD cleanup utility or DDU display driver utility or display driver, whatever you call it. Anyway, so you should use that utilities because I mean, they're facing problems. So I guess you should listen to them, right? So yeah, there you have it. AMD, Vega and Polaris are not dead. Officially, that is confirmed. So that's great.